Hi to everyone here today. I'm going to be doing some simple flowers here with watercolor. So stick around and I'm thinking it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, I've got my watercolor paper here. I'm so glad you guys are here joining me because as I'm using my dagger brush, you can use whatever brush you have. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about mental health and May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And as a mental health therapist, it's just a perfect timing. So first of all, mixing up our paint and I'm adding some green to the pink to desaturate it, make it a little bit less intense and bright, and then adding some water into the paint uh, tray as well, just so that I can have a really nice light mix. So starting off with this, we're not really gonna name the flower. Maybe it's kind of like a peony in the way that there's the fluffiness of these petals here. We have a couple main ones in the middle and then we're just gonna do some really quick C-curve shapes here on the sides in the front or the bottom. And we will have a middle that might look like a poppy, it might look like a peony, some really fluffy um, lines here for the fluffiness of the top of the flower. But it doesn't have to be anything in particular, just making it light and airy and loose. And we'll do a couple other flowers too, as you saw in the preview but I just want to start adding in that first layer and now mixing up some yellow here, adding it a little bit of it to the pink. So now we've got this nice orangey, bright orangey color. So whenever I'm mixing paint, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how much water to pigment, how much water to paint am I needing? Right here, we're doing the buds and just doing some C-curve shapes and then just kind of filling it out a little bit more towards the around towards the top, some little curly petals on top that make it look fluffy just like the other one. And then we'll do a second one of this as well. So with mental health being something that is my career, it's first and foremost in my life and in my in my day to day, I wanna encourage you guys to think about things that you can do to create a better experience with your mental health. I'm gonna mix up some sap green, and just start adding in our stems very lightly, very loosely. Uh, I always like to talk about self-care, the things that you do that are healthy for you, that once you do them, it gives you a little bit of a relaxing break from the stresses in your life and actually rejuvenates you, it heals you. So there's things that we do that can be healing, that the end result makes us feel energized and ready to tackle the next day. But then there are things that we can do that actually drain our energy in the end. It's fun in the moment, but it ends up keeping us from thriving. And so think about the things that help you thrive. For example, painting for me, as I'm doing these leaves here, these C-curve shapes really long and thin towards the end, I'm just doing a C-curve shape on one side and it's okay if you move your brush around, kind of scrubbing on that paper so that it's a little bit wonky. So then you do two of those little shapes and then you fill in the center. All right, so your mental health break, your rejuvenation could be in the form of exercise, could be watching a show, it could be enjoying a moderate serving of some type of treat that you really love. It could be spending conversation with someone or it could be spending time alone. For me, I do love to paint, but what really makes me happy is painting outside and picking an object or a scene in nature and trying to emulate that with my brush strokes and just being out there in the sun and the wind and hearing the birds chirping. It really helps to make my, um, my mental health vibrant. And another thing you could do is maybe you like to call someone that you haven't talked to in a while or maybe you like to bake something that's really delicious for you. So find ways, spending time with animals, find ways that you can rejuvenate, whether it's time with others or time by yourself. So I have a more saturated version of the paint here. I've added a few um, colors to it, a little bit more paint, less water. So we're gonna make that second layer for these flowers just to make our petals stand out a lot more. And I'm not filling in every single space. I want some of the that first layer to show through. And so we're gonna do a little bit more color here as well on the little curly bits, holding my brush very lightly, loosely. And we'll add in now some yellow to our previous color and a little bit of that pink 
shining through for a really nice dark color. That's a little dark for me, so let's remove a little bit of that. But I want to add a nice highlight there so that we're really showing off and showcasing those petals. So let's do the same type of thing here. I'm not being too particular or careful with this. I just want to add the brush strokes and not be too concerned with the end result. If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you know exactly when I am posting another video. Um, we're just darkening up these leaves here. And if you want to take your watercolor journey one step further, go ahead and click the link in the description of this video for Patreon where I teach watercolor and offer lots of cool bonus content. All right, so now I'm taking my liner brush. We're gonna start with a dark paint. You can do brown or you can do black. Have that on your brush quite loosely. We're going to start making these little uh, flicking motions just to put in the center of that flower. So all of these little lines are coming from a center point all together and then fanning out kind of diagonally um, to the outside. So we've got that dark color. You can use black or brown. And then we're gonna take some yellow at the same time. It's very concentrated, so it's gonna show up. I just dipped my brush into that paint well. Didn't even mix it with water because we want it to be very dark and just start making those little flick marks once again. And as you can see, the yellow doesn't show up quite as much or as detailed as the black. And that's just the nature of this color, which is so light. All right, our third layer here, I'm just adding on some really quick, loose, darker brush strokes than the first two layers. And just around the whole flower there, a little bit of the fluffiness on the top too. I'm leaving some brush strokes showing so that we can just have a nice loose look. And if you want to, you could change the color up. You could add some purple to that pink. Um, I just chose to do a little bit darker of that pink. And then again, a little bit of those orange brush strokes here really quick. Don't think too much about it. Just add those to your paper and move on. <laughs> now load your brush with some green and tap it to add some splatter. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next video.